Okay, um, so first of all, welcome everybody. Very nice you're here. Um, my name is Sebastian Hölscher. I'm an MD from Witten, I'm from the start here, and I'm practicing, I'm a general practitioner, basically, um, trying to integrate as much Chinese medicine into my clinic as well, as often as I can. And um, I stumbled across Hunyuan Medicine uh, five years ago, four years, four and a half years ago, and um, I'm very happy and I'm very proud to introduce and invite Dr. Aaron Seidman here to speak for all of us, you know, in front of all of us. And I'm being quite impressed again and again how going really deep into understanding how our body works leads to quite simple and effective treatments. Yeah, I mean, the area here is really coal and steel area, steel either coal mining and steel um, area where people work really hard. A lot of my patients really are quite down to earth, and they don't want anything fancy. Yeah, but they come in and they want something that works. Yeah, and the Western medicine does. They they get it and they are happy, but often it does not. Yeah, and then when you introduce something new, some other techniques, some herbs, whatever, um, lifestyle interventions. It really has to work, they really have to be convinced. And this is what really impressed me most, that um, with very little, very easy things, you really can achieve quite a lot. Yeah? And this understanding and this depth is where I'm getting, the deeper I get into who you are. Yeah? So I'm really happy to have Jaron Seidman here, and yeah, I would really like to welcome him, and he will explain more deeply right now what who you are is all about, and give you a big, the bigger picture. Okay? Thank you um, very much, uh, Bastian. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Which color of pen should I start with? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, again, thank you, everybody, for coming. And I'll try to speak slowly. Thank you, so uh, slow. So we... Uh, before we saw that there are people from all over Europe, which is very nice, osteopath, MD doctors, acupuncturists. And uh, what I want to start today first is introducing Hun Yuan, this concept. First, the name, what does it mean? Which is an ancient concept. Uh, but really, in Hun Yuan, we are dealing with things that are very practical. So when I was flying here yesterday, I thought, well, should I talk about the name? Because the name is like very uh, philosophical. And then immediately you get the impression, oh, this is stuff that is like very out there in the clouds. But actually, Hun Yuan is something that is very practical, very pragmatic. But I do want to introduce the name. And what I want to do first, again, is to use some uh, very ancient uh, Confucian concepts to try to explain what Hun Yuan is. Before this weekend, we'll gradually and systematically cover how does it work like how the theory is, how the diagnosis is, how to do it. But I want to first start in this next hour to explain what are we doing? Like what's the purpose? What, what at the end do we want to accomplish? And so at the end, again, it's a little bit philosophical on purpose, just to understand the big picture. But at the end, the whole weekend, it will be very practical. How to diagnose, how the herbs, how do we do it? So when we finish that weekend, hopefully we can go and start using some of it. So it's not just like I heard a lot, at the end there's nothing I can do with it. You know. First I want to talk about the name Hun Yuan, and I just used, just at the beginning, a little bit Chinese for the name and for the concept. The name Hun Yuan, is a quite ancient uh, concept. The literal translation of the name means a mixed origin, the meaning of which is where yin and yang are separated. Before they were separated, they were together in an original state. So this, again, is a very ancient concept. It's not something that I invented. And it has roots in Taoism and Confucianism from ancient time. But really what the name Hun Yuan wants to express, and that's why I'm using this name, is that everything that we see here has a root from before, which is 
you know, like a root of a tree. You don't see the root, but it's there, and the tree and the branches all come out of it. So when, when we talk about medicine or practicing Hunyuan, we, we have a quest. We are looking for also the roots and the origins of things. And that's why I'm using this name, calling it Hunyuan. Not just what I see here right now, but where is it coming from? What's the origin of things? This is why we use the name Hunyuan. And again, I'm just very briefly discussing this name, Hunyuan, as a concept. And I don't want to spend too much time about that. But this is the name Hunyuan, the mixed origin. It means before we have the dichotomy in the, you know, in the world that we see, you know, day and night, hot and cold, before that, there's an origin where everything comes out of. And in modern time, when we learn Chinese medicine, this idea of origin, which was a, an integral part of Chinese medicine for a long, long time, is kind of diminished. You know, for thousands of years, the talk was that life comes from heaven and the man is connected to heaven. The origin is always coming from heaven. So this Hunyuan a little bit gives this sense that we want to go back to these origins too, like to find out how uh, more classical Chinese medicine developed this concept. <clears throat> now, what I really want to talk about now today is something else. I want to talk about what this... I want to talk about... And again, I will use a little bit Chinese terminology, but this will be just at the beginning. Actually, as I, through the years, go through Huan Yuan and developing it, I try to use less and less Chinese. Even though I can speak and write Chinese, I want things in Huan Yuan to be very clear. So all the names from classical Chinese, I actually translated them into regular language. But at the beginning, on purpose, I want to use some classical terms, but that's not what we're going to do. So it's not going to be Chinese the whole weekend. Just now, at the very beginning. I want to use with... <coughs> you know, Confucianism and Buddhism and Taoism for the last 2,000 years or more are like the corner store, uh, stone of Chinese civilization. So all the Chinese medicine, philosophy and lifestyle is based on these things, but especially Confucianism. I want to use a few concepts from Confucianism to explain what is Hun Yuan. What do we want to do with this? except from the techniques. Like it's not the, the, the answer here is not what the technique is. This will do throughout the week. I want to explain what is Hun Yuan? What do we want to do here at all? I first want to introduce a concept that is called Zhong, or center, right? Zhong, right? Like this. It means center. One of the ancient uh, texts, Confucian texts, is called the Zhong Yuan or the doctrine of, of the common center. And in that book, there's a description, many description of this concept, which is pivot for Chinese uh, culture over the last 2,000 years or longer. And it means that everything that we're doing, if we want it to have the most potential or most life to it, needs to be jumped or centered. So what does center mean? The superficial meaning of it is that it's not too much and not too little. It's just in the middle. But really the meaning of this concept, center or zong, is that everything that happens or everything that we do is just right. Meaning it's just proper. It's just the way it should be. Now this is, could be in medicine, meaning if I write herbs, or do acupuncture, or give drugs, for every single condition there is something that is just right. And if you do it just right, you get the most life out of it. If you don't do it just right, like you think something and you do it too much here, or a little bit wrong there, even if it's good, but it's not just right, you don't get the most life out of it. You get less. This is the idea of zhong. Meaning that whatever we want to learn, or develop, or do, or think, or feel, needs to be just right. This is the concept of jump. And it means also not too much and not too little, but it's, it just right means that it gives the most life to me, to him, to them. That's what it means, just right. 
In other words, it's not something uh, intellectual. You know, like let's say today we say it's just right uh, to drink tea. But uh, 50 years ago it was just right to drink coffee. It's not that. Meaning it's a universal, objective um, truth. What is just right? I don't know exactly what it is, but this is the concept of John. Meaning for every given situation, there's really one thing which is the best. There's not 50 things that are the best. Other things could also be good, but only one thing is the best. Just the right thing. Right? So right now I'm not talking specifically, just as a concept. We're trying to, with everything, to find just the right thing, the most right thing. Even though other things can also be okay. But okay is not good enough, we just want just right. This is, again, it's a Chinese foundational concept for the last 2,000 years. I mean, today we don't use it so much, but in our Hunyuan we reintroduce it from Confucius. Is it allowed to, uh, to ask you something, or uh, better afterwards? Uh, maybe at the end we can ask, because I'll start to explaining it, I might answer many questions too. But here initially I'm just introducing it, we'll go more and more into it. So when we start talking about the herbs, the acupuncture, about the heart, we'll start to talk more concrete what just right means, how to find it, what to do about it, etc. Here I'm just introducing our frame of work, like what do we want to do in general. Can I, can I just say something? Yeah. I think that there's a, another meaning to that, John, which is to do with the arrow that is hitting the bullseye, and that would fit very well with your idea of John. Yes, yeah, so if you want to, there's a lot of things we can say. Of course. The name of China and Grivo, this course, character. Some say also an arrow that meets, yeah. hit the target. The sinologists that decipher this, the etymology, actually say that it's not an arrow that hit it. Ancient time, it was actually like a furnace that has the elixir in it, and that means the life comes out of it. For other people, they say actually this is the mouth of a person, and that line means heaven and earth connect through the person. So there's actually a lot of meaning in that one character. But right now, I don't want to sidetrack too many. But I'm just explaining this Confucian idea of being just right, just in the center. This is important for us right now. The second, and this comes from the text called the Zhongyong, the dark, the theory of the common center, like it's everywhere. So uh, this topic, again, we'll go through it in the weekend. There's a lot that we can say here. Here I'm just introducing it. I'm, I also want to add that this center that I just mentioned, in ancient times, since ancient time, it actually means that the proper thing, that's why that book is called the common center. That center thing is something that is very common. In other words, you do things that are very regular, this is where you find the center. So for us, uh, studying Hun Yuan, to find the proper measure, the proper thing, is not something that is like uh, far and lofty. You know, like there is the great Tao, the mysterious Tao, for us it's not like this. The common center, the proper thing, is like right here. It's like, let's say, husband and wife. You find this harmony, the proper thing is right here. It's not like, you know, to be a good husband or a good father is very mysterious. It's right here. This is the idea of the common center. And now, and this comes into medicine too, like doing it just right is not like mysterious theories, you know, there's some yin-yang, I'm not sure what it is, but rather it's right here. You know, like it's very, you can hold it, it's very clear. This is the idea of the common center, it's very common, it's right here. The second the ancient text that I want to introduce to explain Hun Yuan is the, the text called Da Xue, or Great Learning. It's again another Confucian text. It's called Da Xue, right, or Great Learning. And these two texts are from about the same time, 2400 years ago or so. 
again, throughout Chinese history, they were the pivot explaining what the Chinese idea is of life and health and society and so forth and culture. But in this text, I, I spe specifically want to introduce one concept that they talk about. And maybe I'll just change another page here. And this is uh, the use of four terms to explain how to get to harmony everywhere. It's called uh, ping. Ping means to be balanced. So if you want to have balance everywhere under heaven, let's say, what do you need? There are four things that you need. This is the fourth one. Like if you want harmony, no wars, no disease, everybody healthy and live long life. This is called harmony everywhere. You need three other things before. Again, I'm writing the Chinese and this is the only time maybe that you'll see Chinese the whole week. So it's not going to be like this, but on purpose I do it. It's just that you see the origin of it is very far back. But at the end, the whole weekend, we're going to stop using it and just start talking straight. You know, without references to ancient time. But I just want you to see the ancient roots of it. And this, this is called Xiu uh, Qi. today a little bit just to explain what Hun Yuan is. What is the entire agenda of Hun Yuan? Where do we want to go with this? The first character, Shu, means to cultivate the body, to practice the body. Cultivate body. Qi means to put in harmony or in proper order. Or to order, uh, order the heart. Zhi means to, uh, to treat others. And ping means harmony or peace or balance everywhere. Now in the, in the text itself, in the Da Xue, they say, if you want to have harmony everywhere under heaven, then you need to be able to rule your domain or the country. The country at that time means your just Witten, just the town. That means the state. It's not really like now Germany. But at that time the state means a small domain. You need to be able to rule that domain. But in order to rule the domain well, you have to put your family in order. In order to put, you know, the family, the father and the children, or the parents and children, the husband and wife, brother and sister, they all need to behave properly, or according to Zhong. Remember that character center? It needs to be just right. The mother needs to be just right. The daughter needs to be just right. Every, whatever that means, we don't know yet. But whatever they do, it needs to be just right according to their, what they're supposed to do. So if the mother needs to give milk to the baby, it's not like the baby gives milk to the mother. You know, it's just right. The mother gives me up to the baby. This is the just right thing to do, etc., etc. You know. In other words, if the husband needs to cherish his, if the husband beats up the wife, it's not right. Right? It's not proper. So everything needs to be just right, the way it should be. Then you get harmony. But in order to make the family just right, the person has to be able to work themselves first. Like they have to know themselves about themselves. Now, in ancient time, when you look at text, they always have a superficial meaning, like on the surface of it. On the surface of it, this text talks about social order. If you want to have a harmony between <coughs> the states, then you need to control your state well. If you want to control the state well, each family needs to have harmony in it. Inside the family, 
each person needs to be cultivated themselves. They need to not be, you know, in the dark. They know about themselves. This is the superficial meaning of it. But if you go deeper in it, it actually talks about what we want to do in Khunya. It is the same meaning. And so I want to introduce again how, what Hunyan is doing and it's related to these four steps. I realize that in order to practice medicine well, we need to have this thing. I'm not, uh, not a great uh, artist, but I am trying to draw something that looks like a chair. Okay? And that chair... <coughs>
I need this first leg of the stool. I need this leg of the stool as a practitioner. I need to be healthy myself. My heart needs to be in harmony. Meaning when I see a patient, there's supposed to be a certain harmony here. And this thing again, we'll talk about very deep. What is this harmony that needs to happen here? And then the third part is this zhu. That in the Confucian text means to control the population of the state but actually that character means to treat. This is the Chinese characters, to treat people. And that means that first I made myself healthy, then I make my heart in harm, and then I can start helping him, or her, or them. Right? This is treatment, like the doctor treats them. This is the third leg of the stool. And uh, I'm using on purpose this example of a stool of a chair to show that if you put that chair on one leg it actually cannot stand. In other words, and this is I think in my opinion and you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, the way I understand medicine in the 20th century and the 21st century is that this thing we call medicine actually stands on one leg. What does it mean? A patient comes, they have stomach ache and I want to treat them. This is where medicine starts, and this is where it ends, on that one leg. Now, sometimes it works. Many times it works. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it gets worse. Oftentimes, it's not zone. And I will explain it in the next few minutes more. In other words, in order for me to practice medicine, I need for this chair at least three legs, but you see there's a fourth leg, I'll talk about it in a minute. But at least three, the chair can stand. On two legs, it's not going to stand. On one leg, definitely it's not going to stand. What does it mean, stand? It means it's not going to be just right. Sometimes yes, sometimes not, sometimes more or less. This is not wrong. Right, so if I see patients in my clinic, and I see often time, you know, like yes, just before I came, the same day that I flew here, I had a patient in the morning, and she and I see many fertility patients, people trying to get pregnant. She did few procedures, few IVF, you know, the Western modern procedures for fertility, and she didn't succeed, and she got more and more, let's say, not so healthy in the body. Her heart got more and more broken, like more sad, more depressed. This is not zong. Like the treatment is not zong. There's no more life coming. There's less and less happening. Now, it has nothing to do with good intention or not good intention. Like everybody has good intention. Everybody wants to help. The only question is if it's zong or not. It's not if I want to help or not. Everybody wants to help. <coughs> Even if it's the wrong thing, we still want to help. But it's just not just right. If it's just right, it has to become more life, not less and less life. And I think, I believe, the reason is this medicine, in general, just stands on one leg. Meaning, I learn a technique, I learn a theory, patient comes, they complain about it hurts me, stomach, head, and I try to do the technique on them. I'm not so healthy myself, my heart is not in harmony enough. And I'll explain what it means. And then I want to apply it on them. This is me. And, and I don't mean to be too critical because I'm exactly the same. You know, meaning we have this one leg is very easy. But working these two things is very difficult. Like, I need to be healthy. I need to be proper. I need to be in harmony. This is very difficult. To treat other people is very easy. You know, it's like a business. Like uh, selling flowers. You know, you have a business, you learn the trade and you do the trade. This is very easy. But like to work on ourselves to become stronger, healthier, in harmony. Just try, think about the person that gets you most mad. Doesn't matter if it's your husband, your wife, your parents, someone that gets you really upset. Think about now you need to work on yourself to be in harmony with that person. In total harmony. It's very difficult. You know, all the life, let's say all the life I fight with the neighbor. 
And now I need to change to be in harmony. This is very, very difficult. It is very difficult. But I think, and that's why I'm using this to introduce, what do we want to do with Hunyuan? First, at least, we need to have three legs to this chair. For this chair to have a function, what does it mean for the chair having legs that then someone can sit on? Right? If there's one leg, nobody can sit on it. I mean, you can, but sometimes you fall. For medicine to be proper, you need to have at least this body and heart, and then the technique, the theories, how to do the herbs. This cannot be the first thing, and the only thing. Otherwise, you can, we cannot reach this jump. But more than this, right now, I'm just introducing what we need, but more than this, what does it mean? I'm trying to hear explain what I think, my opinion, what medicine means. It means, when a person comes to my clinic, and on purpose, let's not call them a patient, a person comes, and they have some difficulty, either in their heart, they're fighting with the husband or wife or children, <clears throat> or the body hurts, or they can't get pregnant, or they have headaches, or something physical. My job is, first of all, to try as much as I, as I know, to help them start cultivate their body. That means the job of the doctor is to start teaching the person to become, to teach them how to become healthy themselves. This is the shoe. It's not you come and I need to treat, treat, treat. This, this has its place to treat people. But that's not the only scope of medicine. You come and you teach them how to make themselves healthy. More than that, you teach them how to make their heart in harmony. And this is, again, we'll talk about it this weekend quite a bit. This, in my opinion, is the root for many, many problems, if not half of the problem that people experience. Just think about ourselves, think about the people around you that you know. How many of them feel upset or unhappy or needy or greedy or, you know, all the time? or very often. It's not like we've never seen it. Actually, if you look around, you see it all the time. Now, I'm not saying it is a critical thing. We're all the same, me included. It's just that, according to what I understand, if this becomes more and more harmonious, meaning, let's say, Marina is saying something and it gets me a little upset. But I have a way how to figure it out and then how I'm not upset. And then she starts realizing also that she's not upset. This is called harmony. You know, and, and I'll talk about it in much more detail. So if the patient or the person comes into my clinic, and then not only I teach them how to do the body, like how do you get healthy yourself? I also start to realize I have a method how to diagnose it then a method what to do about it, what to tell them, what should they do to gradually, gradually to get more and more in harmony, even if it's just within the family, but also outside of the family, right? Husband and wife, with their kids, with their parents, half of the diseases already becomes less and less, if not gone completely. The third part is how do I help them, how I help them? if it's not limited just with the body and the heart. Meaning, they feel hot, they feel cold, I have herbs, I have acupuncture, I have surgery, I have methods that I can do it for them. Right? This is the third step, the third level. And it definitely has a very big place here. So don't mistake me, we actually need to learn very thoroughly how to do the herbs and the acupuncture, these techniques. It's just that it comes in the third spot. Why does it come in the third spot? You know, to learn the technique and the theory of the herbs and the acupuncture. It's because the overarching principle of a Hunyuan is to do more with less. In other words, if I can tell the patient, look, just do this exercise. So if you do this exercise, and then there's no more shoulder pain. If I give them acupuncture or herbs, it's not done. It's not just right, because they could heal it with nothing. 
and I give them, I add to them, I try to manipulate them, even if it works. In other words, if I can use one gram and finish it, it's better if, than if I use one kilo and finish it. Even if I finish them with both of them. The principle is, let nature do its thing, if possible. Meaning, try to intervene less and less and do more and more. This is the, the overall principle. That's why it's important that these healing techniques, the herbs, the acupuncture, the methods, how to do things to other people, comes at the end. So you know this can help that. And the heart can remedy these things. We don't even need any methods yet of herbs and acupuncture and surgeries and drugs yet. But then we do, do, do need them as well. But then it becomes more and more dumb. Like more and more proper. Because wherever you don't need them, you already solved it before. But if this is absent, then we always do this. Even if we could do without it, we always have to do this. That's why it starts to be off. Not just right. Because we could solve the problem without this, if, if we knew this, these two lines. So far, does it make sense or what I'm saying is not 100%? So I'm saying in order to have true function of medicine, this at least in Konyuan speaking, I need to have at least these three steps of knowing the body, knowing the heart, and then knowing the medicine, the herbs, the acupuncture, the techniques. It has to come in this sequence. But now what happened is, why, why, what's the story with this fourth leg? And, and on purpose at the beginning, it's a little philosophical because I'm just introducing this, the, the scope of it. Like, what is it? What, you know, you close your eyes, it's like, what do you want to do? Right? I'm saying it's definitely not just that one leg. Like when I practice Hun Yuan, it's not people come with the pain and I want them to feel better. It's definitely not that scope. Right? It's much bigger scope. And the scope here is what the Confucian text says called Ping. Remember we started with this? It says, if you want harmony everywhere under heaven, no wars. You know, it's like very grand, on a grand scale. You need these three first. But now we're not talking about war between Russia and America. Not that. We're talking about medicine. What does that mean, that fourth step? What does it mean? <clears throat> when a person comes into the clinic, now they come, let's say they want to get pregnant. Right? I, can't get pregnant, or it doesn't matter, headache, or some problem. They come with a problem. I have a problem. Can you help me? I could have just said, you know what, I can do acupuncture and herbs, and it becomes much better, right, if the scope is this. If the scope is a little bigger, I say, you know what, actually, if, if you start learning this, how to become healthy, it's very good. Then you don't have to keep on coming to me every year, every month. But more than this, you know, if the origin of the problem or other problems, even not what the person is talking about, are in the heart, right? They say at work, I always fight with the boss or with my husband or wife, we have problem or the children or something. That, again, the specific of it, we'll talk separately, how to do it. Then you teach them how to do the heart. Then, not only can they start to be healthy themselves, but also when they start dealing in their family and with other people, they start to create more and more harmony. You know, one more time. The person comes into the clinic, they want to treat the headache. That's what they want. Right? That's what they want. That scope. The hurt, the head hurt. Can you help? Of course, I want to help. But I'm stepping back. And I say, sure. But let's just also learn how to be healthy by yourself. And let's say I realize that they have also a heart problem. And I say, and how about if you also learn this about the heart? And then I say, how about if you also do herbs for the head? The results here now will be, let's say I do herbs or acupuncture for the, herd, for the head and it helps. 
Right? They came for this scope and they also got that answer. But they also now go home and they start to be more in harmony with their spouse or the children or the neighbors. And they also learn how to get healthy themselves and maybe teach, let's say if it's the wife came and she teaches her husband, yeah, do these exercises too. What happened now is that I help this person and that person then go and she helps someone else. Either just by how she acts with them or how she teaches them. This is called Ping Tian Xia. Make balance under heaven. In other words, the reach of the medicine is not even just limited now to that person. It's not related to me anymore. That person went over there and she's helping someone else by how I helped her. This is, means the scope of medicine is already, we're not even talking about the headache. Meaning that this thing can help life expand, expand, expand out. You know, you do a good thing, this is creating this fourth level. That's why it's dotted. It means it's something that I don't even do and it happens onwards. So, I've been using this example, analogy. It's not really a chair. Medicine is not a chair. But I've been using this analogy of a chair to show that there are few different elements. When you do all of them, you get a much more strong concept. Which is not just like, how do I treat this? You know, like how do I treat that? It's not that one leg. That, that leg exists, but it's not a, a chair with one leg. And it is, I think, in my opinion, is rather very important that this concept of medicine will be different than what it is today. In other words, talking about lifestyle modification, it's not a new thing. It's not like I invented it. Actually, everybody does that. Everybody says, you know, you should eat better, you should sleep better. But I'm saying, these two legs are actually very, very important, and the scope there is very big. It's not something that you read online and after five minutes you know, just eat salad and something. It's not like this. It's very big. You know, like to know how to realize the problem, to diagnose it, what to do about it. It's like that one leg. Remember like when we learn medicine, the techniques, it's not a little bit. A lot of theories, there's a lot of stuff. These two things are not like, you know, eat salad. <laughs> it's like very big thing. Because at the end, if you do this three, I would say you get the fourth leg. Like that's the real objective, that it's, all of it is there. The person themselves becomes healthy, they teach their family to be healthy, their neighbors. Almost like that Confucian text, remember how to make peace under heaven, you control your domain, you put the family in order, you cultivate yourself. It's actually this step. How you spread it out, this is the concept of medicine, the big scope. Now yesterday, I had a conversation, and this goes, this is the last point that I want to make in that introduction. So it's a little bit, you know, like what I don't like to do, is like you put the theory very high up, really it needs to be right here. But I am introducing it despite that. So the person I saw yesterday, that didn't succeed with the IVFs and the drugs didn't work and the health got worse, the heart got worse. But she also said, you know, that a few years ago her mother passed away with cancer. The cancer treatment didn't work and she passed away. The heart is broken since then. And we all experienced that one day or another. You know, when you know parents uh, pass away, things like that. But this is actually related here to the fourth, fourth leg. And so again, it's not the conventional wisdom of medicine that say, hey, medicine is you come, that scope. You treat it, then you heal. But rather, what's, what's the big story here? What do we try to do with a person that comes into the clinic? And how is that related to that person that I just mentioned? I think this is, again, as much as I can understand, and, and that's the only thing that I can do this week, and just share with you what I think, right? Everyone has maybe different opinions. But I'm trying to figure out what is the purpose of us here. 
not just in this room, but in this world. And I think, you know, so this question is like very philosophical, like very out there, like why are we in the world? Who can, who can answer that? Like why are we here? <laughs> so it's very difficult. You know, but I think, and again, this is my humble opinion, I think that when our parents created us, the purpose that we are coming here is for us to be able to exert this fourth leg, which means I help my wife, I help my children, I help my neighbors, I help my patients. I try to not use the what we call the outside of the heart, and we'll talk about it in this weekend, like my desires, my needs, I want, I'm getting upset with people. I don't let that dictate my life, but rather we call it the infant heart, the heart of the baby inside the womb. It's like very pure, and it has this giving ability. In ancient times, it's called like it has heaven in it. So when we talk about helping the person, Exercise so you be healthy. Work your heart so you be more in harmony. You treat them so they be healthy and feel better. And then they go and they start to be more proper in the family and with their neighbors and with other people. And then they start to help them. Friends, remember this level. This is why we're here. So if you ask me what is the scope of Hun Yuan? What are we trying to do? Is it just someone comes with a headache, help them get rid of the headache? Is it just that one leg? I say definitely no. It's at least, at least three legs. Teach them to be healthy, teach them to be in harmony in the heart, and help them in the body to get better, get pregnant, whatever you need to do. At least that. But if you're better, then you start to establish this fourth leg. They go and they start helping you teach them, right? This is all thing teaching, not just treating them. And then they go and then they help their husband, then they help their kid, then they help their neighbor. Then, then they start having their purpose more fulfilled. So does that sound a little bit too fantastic? No. No, in other words, what is the job of the practitioner? It's not just that one leg, just make that pain go away. It is too, but it's not just that one leg. Right? It's all these things and ultimately is to make that person go out. And why? Why is that important? Because if that person comes out and they start helping other people, their heart goes into that state of harmony, that they don't feel in need but they can give out. At that time, first of all, this is for you know, the school that I come from. I'll introduce it later. They say the small benefit of that thing is that you almost never get sick and you get very long life. This is the small part of it. The big part of it is that everybody benefits. And then I would say, you know, like your parents, especially if they're already in heaven, they're actually very proud of you. You know, then like you're really fulfilled. Why are we here? Why the person is here is to help other people, is not to always be sick. So people will help them. I'm not saying there's a problem with being sick. People are sick. But if we can transform this thing, so they're not only not sick, but now they help other people. They don't, they don't need any help themselves anymore. They need to help other people. Then I would say the parents become very, very proud. They're, why are they here? It's being more full. Not only they don't get sick, but people around them also don't get sick anymore. This is what Confucian says, ping, tian, xia, like a balance under heaven. It's harmony under heaven, like this, propels out. This is that kind of a purpose. So I wanted to use this, you know, I know it's a little fantastic out there, you know, the, this whole grand idea. But, but I think it's important that, you know, like if you look left, you look right, what medicine is. Let's look at, at about what medicine is everywhere. And you get used to a certain concept. Then it's hard to break through. You know, and the concept has developed into something that is one-legged. Meaning medicine, people sick, come, you help them. It's that leg, that's it. And of course, I, I can't be so 
including everyone. There are pockets of uh, people that do all kinds of things. But I'm talking about medicine as a whole. It's, you come to get treatment. In general, this is the concept. And what I want to say is, so, so you know, I tell people, maybe let's not call it Hunyuan medicine. Because medicine, it's already people attached to it. You come for treatment. Hunyuan is like a whole concept. Teach to be healthy. Teach the heart to be in harmony. Then treat if needed too. And then the people go out and they help other people. Like that person that I saw yesterday, that failed IVF, that her mother died a few years ago. She did for two years medical treatment. Not only her body is worse, the heart is worse. She is not going out and helping other people because of the treatment. Like that treatment didn't reach any of these legs. I mean, there was treatment. That leg was there, right? Treating, 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 treating. It didn't make the heart happier. It didn't make her healthier. It didn't make her husband happier. You understand? So this is like a, a different concept of what needs to be done. What's the scope? When a person comes in, what needs to be done altogether? You know, it's not just, hey, what's the disease? What's, how do you diagnose it? What do you give it? This is the third leg. And we need to have this, this is like a more complete uh, understanding. What's the purpose? What do we need to do? So again, here, I used on purpose some ancient Confucian concept to explain what I want to do with Hunyan. It's not the entire seminar is going to be like this. We're going to be move, start to be more and more pragmatic. Talking about this, what to do, how to do it. About this, how to do it. What's the techniques, how to understand it. Without Chinese. Even though many of these things do have ancient roots. But the style that I'm teaching actually is normally without Chinese anymore. Like why to use Chinese? It's just get people confused. So it's not really how we learn Hun Yuan. And I'm just pointing it out. But it is, I, I thought it's important in the beginning to show. It's like very ancient model. It's not... And we're kind of bringing it back. It's not like we're really inventing it. It's just been forgotten and you bring it back. It has a very, very big place in the 21st century kind of a reality. Where you treat, treat, treat. And this is not done. And these are not done. Sometimes there's success. Sometimes there's no success. Most of the time, the person's heart and body deteriorate. And their husband and wife get sadder. That's not how you create harmony everywhere. You know. So this is that concept. How about uh, questions about what I said? It's a little bit too out there? <coughs> no, no. Okay. Um, uh, it's interesting because I heard first on the Heavenly Chi podcast. Um, and it was so interesting because when you're hearing this, it's like, ah, I kind of did that. I never had a framework like this. Chinese medicine in school, you just, you just learn the herbs, you learn the acupuncture points, and then you finish. And hearing this is like something that you know on the inside already. And well, I can imagine a lot of people here, uh, it's exactly well, why they're here, because well, the, it's like a calm calling. Well, the truth is, this is what I just talked, not exactly what I just said, but this frame is what happens in my clinic, like with that person yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's not in random. Like, I sit the first time two hours with the person. Mm -hmm. Let's not call them a patient. A person, it's a real person, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And I already, in my mind, I'm establishing a plan. Mm -hmm. So we're talking, not uh, ex exhausting it, but because, you know, then the person is overwhelmed. You start talking and talking for, for days. But I already start to plant seeds that this needs to happen. This needs to happen. And we will do this too, and at the end we'll have that result. Right from the beginning, I have that structure. It's not in random. Like we're not, and for two hours, there's nothing happens in random. You know, like we're chatting. It looks like we're chatting, then the person starts crying, then we talk about her mother, then we talk about the doctors, then we talk about me, then we talk about her, her husband, her work. But nothing here is done in random or chatting. It's not like I have a lot of free time. I spend a lot of time, but it's not like I'm sitting there because I'm bored. 
but I structure it very carefully how to set up the foundation that we come, the treatment will be there, the heart element will be there, the body teaching her how to do it herself will be there. Meaning the moment she entered, I already planning my exit strategy. Meaning how at the end she'll be self-sustained on her own. And if I don't do this, she will never be self-sustained on her own. And her husband will never become happy either if I don't plan it right from the beginning. So right now I showed you like it's the structure. Every one of them have a lot of content and methods that first we need to practice and understand ourselves. Then we can also teach it or use it, apply it. You know, so everything is very clear. Especially when we get to the medicine part. Also very clear. How to diagnose, when to do it, when not to do it. How to know that things are not there but will be there. We call them, yesterday we talked about it, we call them the hidden elephants. How do you know the hidden elephants? Stuff like this. Everything is very clear. And then you'll see, if you choose to try it, you know, the accuracy level, even just of that leg of treatment, is actually quite surprising. Like, to know what could be. You know, so if I see people and they have certain symptoms and things like that, and you research their history, there is a very clear way to say, look, if we do this treatment, and we will learn it this week. If you do this, next week you can start feeling that. Like, you, can, you are actually able to forecast to them what's going to happen. And then if it happens, they know that you know a lot. You know, if what you said going to happen really happened, it's, it's quite a you know, high level of this treatment thing, just that one leg. But also these other things about the heart and body, it's very, very precious. You know, because, it, because that gives you the exit strategy. Just try to imagine that you're not the practitioner. You're the patient or the person on the other side. I want to become healthy, I want you to help me, in the end I just want to be healthy. It's not like I want to come and develop some dependency on you. Right? So this is the concept, how to make the exit strategy right at the get-go. You know, it's like to create that kind of thing. You, you were asking before? No, I'm just, I think it's really interesting for a practitioner because sometimes you can be stuck on number three and just focus that you need so many workshops and this and that um, in order to become a better practitioner and then you use number one and two. Absolutely. So I, I mean that's just my opinion. But if we're stuck at number three, it's always a stool with one leg. So, so if after 20 years we discover that there's another thing, we're actually very lucky because most people never discover it. Yeah. Till the end of life it's on one leg. So. But again, I don't want to be too critical, because I'm like everybody else, also not that great. But I do think that if we go that way, myself included, if we pursue that way, the whole around thing, there could be much better results, in general, could be much better results. And I think you're more stressed as a practitioner if you focus on three and not have one and two incorporated in your life. Yeah, but uh, typically if we just focus on the treatment, it's very difficult to reach to the principle of doing more with less. You know, At the end, just try to imagine that. Let's say, we don't know if it's possible or not, but let's say there are two scenarios. The person comes in and they say, I have stomach ulcer, that's stomach pain. I give the treatment, the uh, herbs or acupuncture, and it helps. Or there's another practitioner, and he just say, look, uh, do this, and then the problem goes away. Which one do you think is better? The practitioners. Which one is better? The one that gives stuff, or the one that didn't give anything? But the same results. Clearly, the one that did less is higher. But it's very difficult to do less and less and reach more and more. It's very difficult. And especially making it systematic, like that you can reproduce it. This is very, very difficult. It's not like, you know, sometimes it happens, stuff happens, but to make it happen consistently, to use less and less and do more and more, is very difficult. 
but, but doable nonetheless. And that's where we want to go. We want to go there. If possible, we want to go there. How about us? From what I said, the English is okay or is it? was very okay. It was just fine. <laughs> because I don't speak English too good either, so I. <laughs> But, uh, you know, this is just introduction to what Hun Yuan concept is. So I like to tell people, you know, yesterday we talked about it. Maybe down the road people are not going to say Hun Yuan medicine. They're just going to say, I come to get a dose of Hun Yuan. Because it's not necessarily you get that treatment, like drugs. Come to learn to exercise. Come to learn how to put the heart in harmony. How to treat your wife better. This, normally people say it's not medicine, you know, I mean, of course in medicine they also have psychology, psychiatry, but I, I don't think it's the same. You know, here, when we do the heart and body, we don't give medication for depression, it's not that thing. You know, you actually make people more complete. Not, not superficially happy, but more complete. They do the proper thing. And again, we'll talk about it quite a bit. How to do it? What does it mean? It's not that uh, simple, but but there's a lot of information, and I will introduce also try to introduce where these things are coming from. Like my information, some of it I developed myself, some of it comes from the Huai Shan school. It's also like a couple of hundred years old school talking about the heart, you know, and where is the Hun Yuan body? Where it comes from? So each one has my, it's my sources. And I will also, during the weekend, introduce it, where is it comes. So don't think like, well, you invented all of this. It's not. So like introducing different things into that structure. You know. Alright, so before we start talking about the, the theories and start to go into the different steps, I think maybe it's good if we take five, ten minutes break, drink some tea, and then we'll start going into the, the details and how to do it. Save your breath. <laughs> Didn't finish the seminar yet. <laughs>